This is a panel on essentially innovation. And um, I want to introduce our special guest moderator, Ebony, who's going to take it over in just a second. <clears throat> she is a good friend and an award winning journalist based in Washington, D.C. area. And I've worked with her on some uh, radio shows, and she is just a wonderful journalist. So, Ebony, I'll let you take it from here. You can introduce our sponsors and um, tee up the video. Absolutely. Um, let me just say, first of all, thank you so much, um, Elizabeth, for even considering me to moderate. This is my second time coming back to the Halal Expo and Summit. So, it absolutely is an honor to be here for the third, the third yep. uh, annual That's event. It. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, and to all our distinguished um, guests as well. Uh, as you know, um, uh, we are absolutely dealing with the, the whole nation is in very difficult times, and so we are going to talk about today how we're going, how we're adjusting um, what's happening in the industry, um, how we can even use this time uh, to be innovative and to uh, be creative. Some of the uh, shout outs. I actually do want to go ahead the video, and then I'll come back, and I would. I want to announce the sponsors that we have for the event. Hold on one second. Oh, I want to buy, I'm looking for the video. Do you produce halal products or offer halal services? Are you looking for a cost-effective way to market to halal customers in the U.S.? Arabesque Media has over 25 years experience in marketing to the Muslim and Middle Eastern communities in the U.S. We are here to help your brand with marketing strategy that fits the halal market, connecting you to distributors, wholesalers, and retailers, finding manufacturing and producers of halal products in the U.S., and identifying international producers. We are the bridge between your company and the halal market in the U.S. Let us save you time and money with our expertise in the halal market. Don't hesitate to contact us for a free consultation. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. All right, so um, before we begin, you know, I always have to thank your sponsors. You can never put together events like this with people who back you. And I know that there have been a tremendous amount of sponsors that have um, come together for this event. So I just want to so go down the list and thank the sponsors that we have here. And please, please, humbly, I will say this at the beginning as I did uh, anything at all. Please charge it to my head, absolutely not. Uh, my heart. Um, I do want to thank the ISWA Halal and U.S. Muslim uh, American Halal Council, uh, Saffron Road, uh, the Standards and Metro Metrology sorry, Institute uh, for Islamic Countries, Americans for Vibrant Palestinian Economy, Halal Watch World, Helping Hand, Guidance Residential, Ibrick Technologies, H2 Grower, I'm sorry, Shiro is. Um, those were our sponsors. Thank you so much um, for, for the work that you do and also for sponsoring um, this event. Uh, I want to now introduce the uh, panel that we have, sorry, the panel that we will have uh, for today. Uh, our first panelist, Steve Suda, is the consultant for the hospitality industry, a seasoned hotelier with over years of international experience in management positions and strategic leader uh, for full service lifestyle resorts and business hotels. He has managed five star luxury hotels in Africa, the Middle East, and in Asia with decades of pre openings and openings as well as rebranding of hotels he focused on innovative sales and marketing techniques utilizing appreciation and understanding of different cultures he is a multilingual and an avid defender of the environment sorry he is multilingual and an avid defender of the environment uh, najib is now based in casablanca morocco thank you welcome thank you for being on this panel uh, definitely forward to what you are going to be offering us today. Uh, I would like to next introduce Marwan Ahmad, 
He's a founder of the Halal Expo and Summit, which began in 2018. He is a Halal advocate in the industry. Now working in a strong Halal business network, he served as president of the Arab American Business Council in Washington, D.C. He has also served as a media consultant to the U.S. State Department. Thank you so much, Marwan. And let me just first say, thank you for helping me even get everything together. You've been uh, so crucial. And um, what you envisioned for this summit is amazing. And I look forward to more coming. Um, the next panelist I would like to, um, let me make sure that they're all here. Okay. Um, it's the Honorable Asma Tadi. Um, is she, is Excuse me, Ebony. Unfortunately, she couldn't be with us due to her broken arm. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry to hear about no, that. No oh, worries. Okay. No worries. I, I had messaged. Okay. Um, got it. Next, uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Atia Ahmad. So that, sorry, once again, Ebony, to interrupt. That's our what, the next panel that you're moderating. <laughs> going down the list well, we can go ahead and absolutely go ahead and begin um we are living in higher times especially um in during covid and it has absolutely changed industries but it has also opened up opportunities uh first i'm going to uh, start with um you i want even in putting this together um what have you had to kind of go through um, during this process, and I, I would say reimagining what this expo will look like. Well, uh, thank you, Ebony, uh, for joining us and helping us with this event. We appreciate you putting the time and effort, um, especially knowing uh, you're a busy person. And uh, thank you, Najib, for joining us. Uh, we are honored to have you, and Elizabeth, for uh, directing this summit. Well, uh, your question is a million dollar question. Uh, we do live in different times. Uh, corona came and turned things upside down for businesses, especially those who are hands on businesses are, and, and they're not used to the digital world. So as businesses confined to their homes, most of them and employees and workers, uh, they were forced either to shut down, unfortunately some of them, but also, uh, the rest had to scramble to find a way to survive. Some would be better than others, uh, but unfortunately, many are still struggling. I'm getting calls on a regular basis from businesses saying, please help us, we need to survive. Uh, this uh, corona thing has is taking its toll on us, and uh, we need to continue business as usual. What do we need to do? So the answer usually is, what are you doing online? So uh, whether you are, if you're a halal restaurant serving food to people on, on the street, or you're a halal manufacturer that makes products uh, for, for the community or a service, if you don't have a strong online presence, uh, you, will, you will suffer during Corona because everything has turned into uh, virtual. So, and that applies to us as well. You know, uh, Arabist media and uh, our clients, our Halal Expo and Summit, we had to migrate from the physical event into the uh, virtual event. And that took us, you know, about two and a half, three months to find solutions because the technology was not available. So we had to go out and talk to IT companies and have a discussion and, and plan things and find who's best, the best way to create and mimic an event on a virtual level. Uh, and we were successful, alhamdulillah, you know. Uh, yes, we do miss the face-to-face -face personal interaction, but this platform has given us almost everything we need with a little bit more because people from all over the world can join this event, not just in our region or, or country. Uh, in the past two years, we had people struggling getting visas to come to our event, whether it's a business or a speaker. 
this year you didn't need a visa to join the video all you have to do is log in so in that sense it was it is an advantage so that, what can, that's the beauty of it mm -hmm. exactly exactly uh what what do we tell businesses in this difficult time uh to to, to basically rebound and survive uh, we we look at their online presence what their website their social medias are they running any email campaigns are they working with any influencers online uh, what is their product what is their service how can they reach their target audience online so there is a lot of playing factors and moving moving elements to, to uh, directing a, a real physical business into an online. So we, we basically audit the online presence of any business or organization because we work with a number of nonprofits who have the same issues because they survive on uh, contributions from their supporters. So we audit them, we give them reports, we find their weaknesses, and we try to fill in the gaps for them. Sometimes we had to redo their website, uh, improve their social media presence, build email campaigns, create videos for them. Uh, so a number, number of things. And sometimes we have to even go outside this box. We have to try to be creative. Like I said, you know, influencers are a big thing today. If somebody has a product uh, and needs to find followings, we go find them influencers that can promote them online, uh, that fits their, their line of service or product. And we create this connection and build the campaign for them. Wow, um, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I want to I um, pivot a little bit because I, I took several notes from what you were saying that I actually want to come back to that were really great because we were so spot on. And as you, you your footprint in hospitality is is absolutely undeniable and so pre-covid and even now you know the halal industry um surpasses a billion you know to over a billion dollar industry right so there's a lot at stake when it comes to this and in hospitality yeah. um we've seen during this time companies really suffering like you know one of the first industries um, that were hit hard was that industry. So what 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 are the changes or shifts that you're seeing um, when it comes to the uh, hospitality hospitality industry? Well, uh, I guess <clears throat> you know the hospitality industry has to adapt itself and stop saying you know let's go back to normal because for me that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> the, normal the normal before doesn't exist because it didn't work. So now, uh, what is the normal? And I, I changed that word actually in my presentation. I, I used another word for it and I call it adapt. Okay, instead of normal, I say adapt because what happens is, you know, this COVID, this uh, nature has shown us that things can happen very, very fast and we have no control over it. So if we sit back and wait and complain and say, hey, you know, we're not going to get anywhere. So we have to adapt very quickly. We have to find new ways and ways to adapt. Uh, the hotel industry, the hospitality industry, I can probably talk about, I don't know uh, if I can mention yes. names. Can I? <laughs> right? Drop names. We'll okay, <laughs> I can drop names. I I, I really admire a chain that's called Shaza. I don't know if you know about Shaza, the hotel chain, which is a which is a, a partner to Kempinski, the hotel chain I worked for. Uh oh, I think you froze a little bit. Froze, yeah. Oh, froze. The, the halal is coming. You know the the amount the the very quickly. Sorry. Okay. Hello. Yeah, and they moved on it very quickly, and they decided, listen, let's build a hotel from scratch, and make it halal. So they they is alcohol free. They serve halal food, and they were all ready for it. You know. So I see other hotels in Morocco also doing the same thing, alcohol-free, and they're doing extremely well. 
these hotels are doing very, very well, and they have their own clientele. They have families coming, and these families bring their, you know, normally they are not afraid because when you have when you have a bar in a hotel, it can be very noisy. It can be very noisy in the evening, and after they go out of the bar, they go through the lobby and they mix with other people and so on. If you have a halal hotel, this doesn't happen. And, uh, you know, families let their children roam about in the hotel, enjoy the hotel facilities sure. till very late in the evening without any problems. I, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, and uh, even pre mothers and children, we, at, in one of the hotels I managed in, in a, in a non-alcoholic place in Sharjah, actually we had to build a station for ice cream because it was such, so much in demand. You know, uh, you, you can make a lot out of this, and I'm, I'm glad to see that hotels are really beginning to so function. So you talked about like kind of like a, think a, about it. A shift, even in what people are wanting during this time. So adapting to something, something new. And the, the example was even the ice cream. But how do you, you know, we see Muslim consumers rapidly, a rapidly growing demographic with tremendous. Um, spending power, um, president, and even especially in the virtual in the virtual world, on um, the disposable income of Muslims, even in the U.S., it reaches ninety eight billion dollars, um, and that was in twenty thirteen. In twenty fifteen, it went up to one point nine trillion, and then we keep going. They're expecting three trillion by twenty twenty one. Despite that, we're even still seeing the same community. Um, can sometimes be largely underserved and frequently overlooked in the economic sector. So how can we begin in this time, um, I would say, to take back power and be, and market more? So for the businesses listening, how can they in this look at this time as an opportunity and how should they, what advice would you give them to how they strategically, specifically how they market? Uh, they have to understand and they have to educate themselves first what is halal and they have to accept that you know in our hotel we are not going to sell alcohol we're going to be very, we're going to sell halal food we, because alcohol in hotels make a lot of money let's not deny that you know it makes a hell of a lot of money and goes down to the bottom line so if you decide to move from that to a halal situation, you have to really understand what this means, what halal is, and get educated on it, and prepare yourself properly before going into it, before starting to serve people. Because, as I say, it only takes one time to impress or not to impress. You know, so uh, a very important sector to consider is is the agro food industry, actually, also, yeah. And that we have to go into because in my next, uh, I'm, I'm talking next about halal in the tourism industry, which I have figures and all that for that. You know, I have, uh, I have statistics and all. So what I'm trying to do now is that explain how overnight we have to readapt to different situations uh -huh. and not just sit back and complain. You know, we all agree that the situation is very challenging. Unfortunately, it's it's challenging. We we agree on that. Uh, especially when we open any news media and we hear things like, you know, coronavirus, coronavirus all the time. You know, that's all we hear everywhere in the world. And we are informed that 40 million people, almost 40 million people are infected with this Bye. virus and 1.3 million people have died. So, I mean, it's scary. It's, it's, we have to face the fact that it's scary and it's not uh, an easy thing. Also governments, what do governments do and, and uh, health experts? They start telling us contradictory recommendations. They start giving us, today they say something, tomorrow they change it and so on. And it, this thing becomes very confusing. And, uh, you know, it's like, an, uh, it's like what we used to do, you know, I, I used to laugh about this. It's called the uh, error, you know, practice and error. 
you practice something and, and then it doesn't fit and then you try it again and it doesn't fit and you change it. Oh, you froze for a second. Way to, to, uh, to trial and error in this. Wow. So I, I want to say this because there will be some people coming into the session. Um, the good thing is when, we're in, when yeah. we're in public, can't talk out loud. So if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. Um, my computer is to the to the right, and I'm going to be looking, just scrolling up to see um, any questions people have. I see comments that are coming in. I'm going to say hi sometimes. I always like to kind of connect with people. Sometimes it feels a little different sometimes when everything is on Zoom and you want that human connection. Um, but we're going to uh, do our best um, to make sure you feel that. So please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we will definitely ask them to our panelists. Um, Marwan, the need small entrepreneurs should take advantage of business opportunities, but as we're saying in the halal industry, to reap the benefit of increasing profits in halal food. What do you see as uh, the greatest potential um, or some of the greatest potentials in generating income? What are some ideas or areas that you see? Uh, the halal industry in general uh, has a lot of potential. Uh, there is a lot of room for innovation uh, because many of the businesses are running on a traditional uh, way. I see many uh, young people or some young people who are coming into the halal business world bringing some innovation. We need to encourage those young people and encourage the new ideas. Uh, sometimes they don't have enough funds. We need to fund these uh, young businesses. Uh, if somebody has any innovative business that's halal uh, concept, we need to support them because they also will make and provide solutions to challenges in the halal industry. Uh, we need to keep in mind that halal consumers today are very educated and very smart and have many tools online to go and search what is the good business and what is not a good business. Because you claim to be halal, people don't automatically think you're a good business. They're gonna go online and research and they're gonna look at reviews and then they're gonna decide whether to give you a business or not. So do not undermine what the consumer's in, in, you know, abilities and intelligence uh, to find out about your business. I totally agree with that. Najee, do you have any ideas when it comes to generating an income? What are some of the greatest areas uh, that you see a potential? In the, in, in the industry the agri, or in agri, the agri business? Agri. Okay. Yeah. Um, the agro business is, is, uh, is huge and uh, we have to look into it. You know, people went to the grocery stores and they found out that uh, there are no more groceries on the, on, the, on the aisles. So a lot of people went home and uh, decided that they were going to go into agriculture, have a sustainable and be sustainable, you know, instead of depending on uh, grocery store items and so on. So uh, the data shows in, uh, there was a Dubai during the Global Islamic Economic uh, Show Summit showed that to, in, 200, in 2012, the Muslim consumer spent over a trillion dollars on food, which is 16.6% over over overall food expenditure in that time of year. It was expected to reach 17.4% of the total food expenditure in 2018. So this is a huge, huge, huge industry that we can all look into. And, you know, to, to find out, you can go on, as Marwan said, you can Google it. You can see who can help you and, and, and go into it. But it's huge. It's huge business. And uh, the halal industry has a value of over $3 billion and expected to reach $10 billion by 2030. Hmm. So the industry offers a huge range of business opportunities. And it's not only in the agribusiness, but in cosmetics, in pharmaceuticals, in tourism. So it's wide open, you know? Absolutely. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll just say this even from a personal perspective, because the last time I moderated, it was um, 
it was an opportunity to kind of check my lifestyle, right? So even behind you, Marwan, it says um, halal is not just a product, it's a lifestyle. And the thing that COVID has shown us during this time is that we, there's, we are moving away from some of the commercialism, processed, um, unnatural ways that we have been living. And this is a good time um, for those who, like you said, Najib, Najib, say that they have a, a halal type lifestyle, but you're really not living it. And for those who have not been to now step into that. So the last time I actually went and changed over even my cosmetics, and we know cosmetics is a several billion dollar industry. Um, and now during COVID, literally many of us are at home checking our cabinets, um, checking yeah. our cosmetics, um, where we stay, how we live, because we're seeing, um, even down to the, the vitamins that we take and what's in them, um, from what doctors are saying, it, 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 is, it is helping to, the more toxins that, we, that we're not putting in our body, the healthier that our bodies are becoming. And so people really need to re-examine um, how they are living um, during this time. Um, I want to come back to um, you, Marwan, and actually, anyone can answer any of these questions is not in particular where can people go so I'm, I'm a small business owner and i'm watching this now and i like what you're saying but i'm like i need help where in the industry can i start to go to begin to look at even when it comes to financing right so i want to be an innovator in this time or i have some ideas where are some places that people can begin to um either find online um uh, during this time because finance um, is a huge huge issue right right so this this falls under uh, halal business startups and we have been talking to a number of halal business startups to help them or direct them toward funding um, but the one thing that we had to do is filter through those startups because we're not looking for a traditional startup we're looking for innovative startups somebody was coming up with a solution to a problem that exists uh, so uh, i'm always taking bring taking emails and calls from you know entrepreneurs who are starting halal businesses and looking for for support so that's are the funds available yes there are investors out there that are looking for ideas and want to invest and looking for something solid, somebody who comes in with a strong business plan and uh, the, you know, they're passionate about what they do and they're not just doing it on the side or for fun. When they see somebody who's serious enough, they're willing to, to fund those uh, young businesses, uh, you know, innovative businesses. So when you when you're talking about you know being serious, what are some things that you can tell people? This is what you need to have together in this season, or these are some things that um, maybe you were able to get away with pre-COVID, but now you've got to have this in order. What are some of those checkpoints people need to be looking at? Because it, it says we've got to get back to business, and Najib, not usual, but we have to adapt. Absolutely. Um, number one is a solid business plan. And if somebody doesn't have a solid business plan, we can get them somebody to help them. But number two, investors like to see startups having some stake in, in the business, meaning they bring in some funds on their own, uh, not just relying completely on the, on this, on the investor's money. Uh, that tells them that they're serious about it and they're, they're taking a chance with them as well. There are other factors, but I think these are the two most important ones right now. I think we lost Najib. Oh, is he here? Oh, I see. Okay, he's in. <laughs> I missed all that because you know, I, happening. everything is freezing up. I'm not hearing the questions. We got I'm not to hearing add. anything. <laughs> right. It's okay. It's right, after. right, but we have you back. Anyway. Just in time for yeah. um, the, my next question, which something companies really should have been doing before when we were so focused on brick and mortar. Um, how can people even begin to look at partnerships or even merges? Because a lot of times you may have several businesses doing the same thing. And there's, is there, do you believe that 
that's an area that people need to begin to looking at merging um, so that we can save some of the businesses that are that may be feeling like they're falling by by the vine or even if you're a stronger one um, coming in and either buying or coming to some type of partnership how do you see that um, during this time uh, is that for me yes okay yeah well um, the smart people will go to the experts you know they have a company they go to a different experts to see which companies are doing better in a certain area and then they can try to 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 negotiate with them and join them and be you know merge together because it's very difficult now to stay alone i have a, a situation here in morocco where i'm consulting for a group who has uh, franchises here and uh, unfortunately doing very very poorly these days because of what's happening and now we are looking into merging with other companies like for example the construction company which is doing quite well still yes, yes. and uh, yeah doing ex right. doing quite well that's has yes yeah i know people are still buying because i guess the prices are down now but people are still buying homes and buying houses and building so we are trying to merge with another company and, and merge with them. I'm trying to work on this to have a, a, a construction company which is doing extremely well and our company which is you know bringing food franchising from, from the United States, trying to help each other. Hmm. That's, that's, that's incredible. It's, it's funny that you mentioned it. And, and I'll just say this even to a lot of small business owners, I can't stress the importance of that. I own my own PR company of really making, um, looking at your social media presence um, and making sure that you have a strong brand presence um, online. We've even had to find creative ways um, to redo our business, even looking at online affiliate marketing, looking at ways to create passive income. Um, and I, are there any ways or suggestions that you all have when it comes to looking at any type of passive income that businesses may need to begin to incorporate or look at that they may have not really paid attention before. Like I've gone through a total revamp and I was surprised at the opportunities to create wealth that I hadn't paid attention to before, but sometimes the pressure um, makes you have to look for those, but are there any suggestions that Juan or Najib you all have for that? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by passive income, if you can clarify that. So for instance, I'll give you an example with the affiliate marketing. Um, we've gone on with our business and become brand ambassadors for um, other companies running ads online on our site. So even while we're sleeping, as long as someone's clicking or as long as someone is doing a trial because we signed up to be an ambassador or an affiliate marketer with them, um, we're still making, you know, making money off of that. So it could be any type of investment. Um, that you have where you're you know just once and you're out another thing actually a suggestion is we began to uh, we're putting together some classes on um instead of always every five minutes turning around and doing something live or teaching i'm like you know what let's package it put it together and put it online so that then people um can buy it. and i don't have to keep going back to that and i guess way smarter um instead of working so hard during this time yes so um the affiliate marketing and drop shipping businesses is really taken off uh, especially now uh, because people are looking for alternative income the problem with that a lot of people are doing it so you have a lot of competition and and you have to spend a lot of money marketing to to compete uh, whether you're using Amazon or you're using uh, Alibaba, uh, B2B or, or, or Express, uh, these options are available, but they're going to be trickling in. They're not going to bring huge income unless you are a major influencer on social media and you have a big following. I, I like the education that you mentioned because everybody is on, online today given webinars and uh, most of these webinars are free and they're not structured. 
like you said, they're not put together in packages. Uh, well, we packaged it here and we created the, the expo and summit in an event that has tickets, so it's monetized. Uh, so in, in, in that sense, we packaged a, a concept of halal into an event and offered it online for vendors, sponsors, and, and people to come and purchase tickets. So education is big. Uh, many businesses, even who sell products or service, are, are going toward educating the consumers while they're selling them because they know a smart consumer uh, will tend to buy from them. Um, great. This season that we're in, and I, I'm definitely not an economist or it, it, the prediction is that we are going to be in this for over another year. Um, and it's going to, we see technology advancing at levels um, that we've not seen before, innovation um, happening um, constantly. Are there some areas that you feel like people are not looking at? So we've talked about some great opportunities, construction, building, agriculture, but where are people not looking that may not be as congested? Like we were saying, affiliate marketing, you were right very much, Marwan, everyone is you know, kind of descending upon that. But are there some nuggets that you can give us, Najib, that, to say, this is where you see great opportunities coming that people aren't quite looking at. Oh, can you hear me? Oh. That's for Najib. Right? That's the word for the Yeah. I didn't hear anything you said. Oh. Are there, we talked about areas that people are moving in that have been very beneficial and been very good, but where are areas that you can see that down the line? I'm sorry, but I, you, you, you said something about okay. the, uh, he's, he's having, having, he's having internet issues. Yeah. Okay. So Marwan, I'll let you take that and I will type, I'm going to type in the chat, maybe Najib will be able to see yeah, it. So yeah, Najib, yeah. I will, if you can hear me, I'm going to type the question in the chat room just so you can know where we are. I have our one thing. So yes, good question. Um, there's okay. one simple answer to okay. your question. Find okay. a problem, then find a solution for it. Then you will be the unique business out there providing that service or product. Um, I'm not a big fan of copying others' uh, successes. I'm a big fan of, of innovation. Uh, find find a solution to a problem and you'll be a successful business person, uh, who, but you have to be also passionate about it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, I, so you answered that quickly. I'm going to delete that, but here's my next question. And this, this season has... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Can I, can I yeah. just jump in a little bit here? Ebony, can I jump in while I, while I can still talk and can still listen? I'm in the hotel business. This is a problem in the in the hospitality industry, which is which is something I know very well. People, you know, are stuck in the past. They keep doing the same things. They don't innovate. They don't go to new ideas. They don't they don't want change. They're in their comfort zone, and they don't want to move out of that which is uh, creating a lot of problems. Smart hotels do change, you know. They, yeah, they're creating things like smart. They, you don't need all that luxury. All you need is a very comfortable bed, a good shower in the morning, a nice breakfast, and out you go. So these people are succeeding. The other five stars, their oh. clientele, but it's limited, okay? This is a limited market. The other thing is, no, go ahead. It's good. Oh, it's it froze for something. While while it's frozen, I'm gonna piggyback a little bit. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? No. I'm just gonna jump in really quickly and say oh. to um the while we while we get him uh, back. Forget about forget about the girls. Yeah, forget about the normals and adapt to new situations. Ready to change fast and quickly. 
you know, yes. and innovate. If not, you stay stuck. You have, it's okay. You have your, you know, but it's limited. You're not, you're not uh, looking, your, your target market is limited. It's not, you know, expensive. Oh. It's not. I think during this time, people also will, they will, because we don't know what's opening and shutting. People are looking for small, um, exclusive um, types of things that they can adapt to. So I'll give you an example. I have a friend just decided to redo their own house. They're now in the bed and breakfast industry. They had a, they turned their, one of their homes into a small Airbnb. So they're making money by renting their pool. Then they built a tree house. Then they now are doing tours throughout small wine tours, groups of four. And, and during this time, her husband, has, since they turned into a bed and breakfast, has been able to quit his job because of the amount of money. I mean, they stay booked and they have, they have really looked to see every place that they can turn into a business. And it's been amazing to me. So that's on a very small scale. But this has also opened up opportunities on a global scale because there are no borders when we look online, right? So brick and mortar, it's traveling, it's paying here to be there, but there are opportunities online that people can take advantage of when it comes to creating wealth and expanding their business. Um, talk, talk briefly about global opportunities that you have, even in building businesses as far as other countries or reaching out to other sectors. Sometimes we just say, let's say I'm in deep here, but I need to be look um, at other countries. Who is the question? Uh, who is it for? Since I can hear you right now, Najib, I'm going to let you jump in while we have you. Well, you see, when you want, if you want to do business in other countries, uh, it's not really easy because you have to learn the. First of all, you have to learn the, the culture and know the people and uh, know the language, probably, and so on, and know what's going on. Go there, and uh, you know it's 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 not an easy business. So people who have this ability to adapt and to to understand cultures and so on, very successful. I'll give you an example. I was in Chad, in Central Africa, uh, running the uh, running a hotel there. And then I resigned after one year because of the danger, very dangerous. They brought in six general managers within one year to replace me and it didn't work. So they had to call me back from where I was and they bring me back and I stayed for another six years. So knowing the culture, knowing the people, knowing the language, uh, understanding the people is very important mm, you know? mm. yeah. I, I see a couple of questions in the chat um we're going to close wrap soon i just want to get to two really quickly marwan i'm going to come to you here are the two questions that i'm i'm seeing um by ola hi ola um either of you can take this and habib has asked a question one question is they want examples of innovation and the other, Ola says she wants to see if there's a potential of halal fitness in 2021 or halal swimming in 2022. So that question, and then where are some examples of innovation with you first? Well, uh, Habib and everybody else, uh, innovation is, a, of course, is a wide term. Uh, if you're already in business, use technology, uh, build an app, to make your business streamlined and, and easier to, to use for you and for your customers. If you're new to business, use technology also to build your business because with today's technology and the epidemic, you don't need to travel anymore to do business. All you have to do is be online, uh, whether a website, an app or both, uh, provide the solution using technology. If you don't know much about technology, hire somebody who does know technology and tell them what you want and they will build it for you. But it will build your business on the map. One thing I'd like to advise business people who are already in business or want to enter business before I, I end, do not freeze. Keep going, do anything 
be be you know uh, flexible do not just wait for things to happen like Najib said many people are just in their comfort zone and they're not able to it just froze. You know, move forward you know let go you know let go your your standard standard way of business and, and look at your business from many different angles ask people what they think about your business and you will hear you'll hear surprising answers hmm. 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 And I'll say even in there was some several articles that came out that was talking about nutraceuticals and um are uh, is it for the hell out industry this is a good time to maybe even get in that industry looking at nutraceuticals. Um but I'm gonna go back to you. Yeah, um I'll just go back a little bit to what your friends have the Airbnb. In Morocco they started innovating, they started buying about 15, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, started buying old houses in the Medinas. And Medina is the old city. And renovating them and creating what mm. you call Riyadhs. I don't know if you heard about this. <laughs> oh, you were, it was getting so good. <laughs> they may have five, okay. six rooms, but okay. very luxurious. Are, and, uh, you know, yeah. And, 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 you were talking about Riyadh. Sorry, where did you, where did we end? Oh. Over in Marrakesh in Fez, they buy these old houses and they renovate them and create, you know, extraordinary with Moroccans, Moroccan style. You know, where, and, and it's been doing extremely well. People are actually moving from hotels mm -hmm. to Riyadh now, even wow. though they are more expensive. You know, because it's it's innovative, it's new, it's something different from a typical hotel. It's it's you know this is what you need. You need to innovate. You need to create new things, and uh, you know. Uh, more Interesting. Oh, I, I got. I tell you what, I would I would love to see, and I've seen it so many other places, but I would love to see it even um, on a larger scale in the halal industry. Is um, the the door-to-door -door food prep services. So you food for the whole week for the family, and I but I would love to see it um, on such a on a, a global scale when it comes to the halal industry. Um, I've signed up for a couple of them in the past, but I think that that would be just. I don't know if we saw that um, on a global level or even here nationally. Go ahead, Marwan. There is one coming. We're talking to a business in the U.S. that's going to provide halal uh, meals to families, to their homes, uh, nationwide. Wow. That's amazing. So yeah, there's there are opportunities, there are things there. You just have to kind of look all around you. Everything that you see, as Elizabeth up, can be converted to something else. We just have to really reimagine the world that we are in. And even though it feels like there's death to our left side and death to our right, there's so much life that we can create and opportunities. But if you do not, um, like Marwan and Najib were saying, if you stop, if you pause, uh, if, you don't, if you don't continue to um, excel and push forward or rebrand your business, many will die on the vine and we don't want that. So thank you so much, uh, Marwan, for um, even putting this stuff together. It's phenomenal. Thank you for the wisdom that you've given everyone. I hope that uh, for the for the insight and the wisdom that you've given us and for the groundwork that you've even laid when it comes to hospitality. This has been um, a pleasure moderating this event. Elizabeth, I'm going to turn it back over to you, but thank you so much uh, for having me even be a part of this. I hope it has checked everybody. It has checked me for some things I need to kind of rethink on a day-to-day -day basis as we um, get through this time and blessings to all of you. Thank you, Ebony, and thank you, Najib. Thank you. thank you very much, Ebony, for moderating this panel. It was excellent. Yes. Ebony will be back with us for another panel. Uh, mm, I think it's this Hello. last panel of the day. Um, so to just conclude the session, let me remind you all to thank stop you. by thank the you very much. Stop by the vendors, visit the vendors, take advantage of network. Um.
Do stick around for the awards and also vote on the polls tab.